To all of those who are watching us on Facebook and other social media platforms, happy Sabbath to you and to my beautiful brethren, Mayon Buntag, Saadlang, Igpapawulay. So far, we have heard speakers, brothers and sisters in the faith, talking about the first angel's message and the second angel's message. There's also a third angel's message which is extremely critical for everyone to understand. Very critical. Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in, in his forehead or in his hand. I mentioned the word specifically in, because when you look at other Bible versions other than the King James Bible, it's on. It's not on. It's in, and you will see why. In that beautiful passage of the third angel's message that I spoke about in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, there are five important terms that I would like to address, and I will do this in a succinct way, but we have to go in detail. The first term is loud voice. We are to preach the third angel's message with a loud voice, with thunder. It has to be shared to the whole world for the world to understand what it is. Just as in the first angel's message, the angel spoke with a loud voice as well also in the third angel's message because of the importance. The word importance is not even strong enough because of the emphasis of what the outcome will be for those who will take the mark of the beast. So the loud voice has to do to, to preach it. When you preach with a loud voice, you get attention. When you preach with a loud voice, pe people pay attention to what you say. It has to be shared. If you talk with a whimsical, soft voice, people will say, what is he or she saying? I don't understand. You have to speak with conviction and with strength and with power through the Holy Spirit. Another term that's mentioned here in the third angel's message in Revelation 14 Verse 9 is the word worship. Worship is performed when you revere, praise, and pray to God, to our Elohim, the Christian God who rules the universe. Christ says that we are to worship God in spirit and in truth in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, which Brother Stephen just spoke about which points to the first angel's message in Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, where we are called to the true worship of the Most High God. However, Revelation chapter 13, verse 8 says that there is a man who will receive worship and reverence from the world's citizens. The verse says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Those citizens who will worship this man do not and will not have their names written in the book of life of the Lamb Jesus Christ. It's that critical. So the world will worship a man rather than God, according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. But Peter says we ought to obey God rather than man. But the world will do the opposite. Another term that's mentioned in the third angel's message is beast. Before the identity of this man that I spoke of, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Before the identity of this man is revealed, we need to provide some context. 
in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, the prophet of God says that a beast represents a kingdom or a nation in Bible prophecy. The first nation or beast in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, is a nation that rises out of the sea. The sea consists of water. Water, in Bible prophecy, represents peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Therefore, this beast or nation is found in a densely populated area. The book of Revelation also mentions that this beast or nation in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, the beast that rises out of the sea, has three important uh, traits. It has a number, an image, and a mark. There's only one nation in the world. There's only one nation in the world that has a number, an image, and a mark. That nation is the Vatican which is the beast that rises out of the sea or is found in a densely populated area, Rome, the city of seven hills. Now that we know that it is the Vatican that is described in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, then verse 8, which is in the midst of Revelation 13, verses 1 to 10, which speaks of a man who will be worshipped by the world's citizens, Well, that verse, verse 8, speaks of him as a man who is the head of the Vatican. And that is the Pope. Thus, it is the Pope who will be worshipped by the world's citizens, whose names, again, remember this, by the world's citizens, whose names are not found in the book of life of the Lamb. Slain from the foundation of the world. I will explain shortly how this man, the Pope, will be worshipped. Another important term mentioned in the third angel's message in Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 is image. As mentioned, the Vatican has a number, sorry, has a number 666, which points to the different titles of the Pope including Vicarious Filii Dei, which means in the place of the Son of God. No one takes the place of the Son of God, Mr. Pope. Let me tell you that. That's blasphemy. An image is a reflection or something of something or someone. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you see your image or a reflection of your face. Likewise, the Vatican has an image or, or a reflection of what it is. The, re- the Vatican is directly linked or associated with the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church. The headquarters of the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church is located at the Vatican, which is a country, the beast. Thus, there's a union of church and state. The Babylonian Roman Catholic Church is the same woman or church which sits on a beast, the beast being the Vatican, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, which says, So he, that being the angel of God, carried me away, the apostle John, in the spirit, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns the woman is the babylonian roman catholic church which sits on the vatican beast go to the vatican that's where you will find the headquarters of the babylonian roman catholic church and i say the word babylonian rightfully so as per revelation chapter 17 verse 5 Thus, in Rome, there's a church and state entity. We need to understand that. It's in Rome that you'll find a church and state entity, the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican. Some people will say, no, it's Jerusalem, or it's Washington, D.C., or Mecca. 
The problem is those cities may have seven hills, but it does not have a church and state union within its borders. There's also an image or a reflection of this church and state union. Again, the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church with the Vatican State. There's an image or a reflection of it. The image of the Vatican beast is found in the United States, the second beast of Revelation 13, and more specifically, Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 to 16. So what is that image? The image of the Vatican beast, again, which is linked to the, to the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church, a church and state union, consists of the 501c3 government registered churches, the majority, the great majority of which are Sunday keeping churches, which are linked directly to the state or the U.S. government as tax exempt organizations. These churches include the apostate, lawless, Protestant, Orthodox, and SDA churches, which are registered with the U.S. government. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 shows that the image of the beast, or the 501c3 government registered churches, will agree, will unite with the Vatican in beheading those who will not worship the beast or the image, those 501c3 churches, or receive the mark of the Vatican beast. For the SDA church, the outcome of being linked to the government as a 501c3 government registered church will definitely not be good, as I will explain very shortly. Now that we've spoken about what the image of the beast is. This brings me to the mark of the beast, the beast or nation being the Vatican. Again, that's in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10. The mark of the beast is the essence of the third angel's message in Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 to 11. As we know, the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy that contains symbols. The book of Revelation is a book of prophecy that contains symbols. As Daniel chapter 7 and verse 23 says, a beast represents a kingdom or a nation. While Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 tells us that a woman represents a church. Likewise, the mark of the beast is an entity that belongs directly to the Vatican beast, hence the mark of the beast. It's a symbolic symbol. It's not a tattoo. It's not a chip, which can be seen with our eyes, since the mark of the beast will be in the forehead, in the forehead or in the hand of those who will accept the mark of the beast. So for those who think it's the RFID chip, it's not. And I will explain to you how it is not. In the King James Bible, which is the only Bible I strongly re recommend for you to read. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 to 11 says, and it speaks about the outcome of those who will accept the mark of the beast, which I will reveal very shortly what it is. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 to 11 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in the forehead, not on, but in the forehead or in his hand. What happens to them who will do that? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. 
and the smoke of their torment ascend up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. I already explained who is the beast, who is the image, what worship is about, and now it's time to know what the mark will be. So, again, the mark of the Vatican beast will be in the forehead. In. Please remember that. According to the King James Bible. Or in the hand of the citizens of the world who will worship the Pope as the man who is identified in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Thus, there's a direct connection between the worship of him, the Pope, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, and Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, as the world will worship the Pope. How? By accepting his mark in their forehead or, or in their hands. In the mind is the frontal lobe, in the forehead, sorry, in the forehead is the frontal lobe, the brain, the mind to make decisions to accept or not the mark of the beast. Please understand, and this is very critical, please understand that the mark of the beast is directly linked to worship. As mentioned in Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 to 11, also as well in Revelation chapter 16, verse 2, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, and Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Please jot down those verses, look it up in the King James Bible. You will see that the mark of the beast is mentioned... And right beside it is worship. In those verses, the mark of the beast, again, the beast being the Vatican, is linked to worship. How then can it be an RFID chip or a tattoo, as some people are suggesting? You listen to our Protestant friends. They're Protestants, Sunday-keeping Protestants. Some of you have said in times past, oh, it's the UPC code. Yeah? You go back to the 1980s, it is a UPC code. And then you change your mind. No, it's the RFID chip. And now with the outcome of what we just had in the world, if you know what I mean, it's something else. There's always something else that's new. It's a guessing game for you as to what the mark of the beast will be. But God says that the mark of the beast is directly linked to worship. The chip has nothing to do with worship. Okay? The problem is, is that Protestants will quote Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, that no man can buy or sell lest you have the mark of the beast. But that's not the chip. It's about worship. What is then now the mark of the beast? The mark of the Vatican beast, since we've already identified the beast as being the Vatican. What is its mark? Which... The world citizens whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will accept and they will have it in their foreheads by making the decision of accepting with their mind, their brain, the frontal lobe of their brain to accept the mark. What is that mark that you should never take or accept? And that has to do with worship. Sunday is our mark of authority. The Vatican goes on to say, the church is above the Bible. And this transference, this tra transference of Sabbath ob observance is proof of that fact. This is recorded in the Catholic Record of London, Ontario, September 1st, 1923. The Babylonian Roman Catholic Church is above the Bible. Notice that the Vatican, the beast that rises out of the sea in Revelation 13, admits that its mark is Sunday. And it's not just a day. It's public, weekly, Sunday rest and worship. The mark has to do with worship. Sunday worship has to do with worship. There's your mark right there. It's going to be in your forehead 
by you making the decision of accepting with your brain, which is in the forehead, the frontal lobe, to say, yeah, I'm going to decide to accept the mark of the beast. Another statement made by the Vatican about her mark. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change from Sabbath to Sunday was her act. It could not have been otherwise, as none in those days would have dreamed of doing anything in matters spiritual and religious without her. And the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. This is from the office of Cardinal Gibbons, a cardinal. A cardinal says that through Chancellor Thomas in 1895. Another statement. Sunday is a Catholic institution. It's not biblical. It's a Catholic institution. This is the same Vatican that says that the church is above the Bible. Sunday is a Catholic institution and its claim to observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. From beginning to end of scripture, there's not a single passage that warrants the transfer of public weekly worship, worship from the last day of the week to the first. Is this mentioned by a Sabbatarian? Did I write this? Did any of us write this? No. This is printed in the Catholic press of Sydney, Australia in 1900. In 1900. Notice that I mentioned the word transference, change, and so on. When did this happen? The change from the seven-day Sabbath, the biblical and commanded seven-day Sabbath, happened at the council or synod of Laodicea, Laodicea of all names, of the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church in 364, as per canon number 29. There's lots, of, there's lots of information that I've just shared. It happened at the Synod or Council of Laodicea of the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church in the year 364, as per canon number 29. This is to show you that these statements that we just read, it shows how history points to Bible and to Bible prophecy, and how Bible prophecy is that accurate. The Word of God is truth. It shows right here. Bible prophecy written by the Apostle John in 95 AD is coming to pass soon. Before I conclude my presentation, as mentioned, the SDA, our dear friends at the SDA, is a 501c3 government registered church linked to the US government. When the Vatican Pope's, when the Vatican's Pope will enforce his mark of public weekly Sunday rest and worship, the world will oblige and agree, including the US government. When the U.S. government will enforce Sunday as the public weekly day of rest and worship, all organizations, all churches that are 501c3 government entities will have to comply. And that includes the SDA church, which again is a 501c3 government registered church. The SDA church will have to comply with Sunday laws, or else, if it chooses to remain a Sabbath-keeping church, it will have to pay back unpaid taxes to the U.S. government from the day it became a 501c3 government-registered church. That will bring financial ruin to the SDA church. Now, the question is, do you actually believe that the SDA church will accept financial ruin by remaining in Sabbath-keeping church? No. Thus, by becoming a full-fledged Sunday-keeping church, the SDA church will remain financially sustainable. 
It's all about money. I mention full-fledged because already some of the local SDA churches are already hosting Sunday worship services so as to condition their members to accept Sunday as the eventual mark of the beast. To conclude, anyone who will accept the mark of the Vatican beast over the biblical and commanded seven-day Sabbath of the Lord thy God will, number one, reject to recognize God as the creator. As described in the seven-day Sabbath commandments, which our dear brother Stephen read in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. So you, they will reject God as a creator. And number two, they will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And whosoever shall accept the mark of the beast shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Yeshua. The wrath of God, his seven last plagues, are described in Revelation chapter 16. And those who will be affected by these plagues will be having a terrible time. The choice is yours. Either you obey God and keep his holy ten commandments, including his seven-day Sabbath commandments, and not receive the mark of the beast, or you accept with your brain or mind, which is, again, in your forehead, by not working with your hand on Sunday, the mark of the Vatican beast, which, again, will be the public weekly Sunday rest and worship. And they will lose out on their salvation. You will lose out on your salvation. You will because you would, have, have, you would have disobeyed God by uplifting the law of the man of sin in the Vatican over the law of God who is eternal. And his holy law, his holy ten commandments, represents love and truth. Please read First Epistle of John chapter 5, verse 3, and Psalms chapter 119, verses 142 and 151. Heaven is a choice. Please make the right choice. May the love, peace, and grace of the Most High God, who is love, truth, and who is eternal, be with you in these troubling end times. So be it. Amen.